Welcome, my name is Jeff Ainsworth. I am the creator of Iconic Baseball. As far as I know, the only purely dynamic video baseball game on the internet. And in this video, I will walk you through the basics of how to play, then the navigation, and lastly, an in-depth look at how to master Iconic Baseball. Let's start with the basics. Yay! Iconic Baseball has a top-down view. You, the user, are the home team, and you're playing against the computer. So you will start on defense. Here's how to pitch, first using the mouse, after I'll show you how to use the keyboard. Locate the white button, lower right, and click it. That's it. To reset the pitch, we can click anywhere on the game or the reset button. Now, let's try something different. I'm going to double click this time and see if you notice a difference. Did you see it? Let's try it again, but this time keep your eye on the lower left corner, the mile per hour display. So we double click. 97 miles an hour, so that's a fastball when we double click. Let's reset and try to single click. And notice the pitch path this time. See how it was kind of curved? and it's 65 miles an hour. So one click is a curveball and two clicks is a fastball. So let's see what happens when I slow the double click down a bit. The path is still straight, but the miles per hour is lower. It's 87, so that's a changeup. Much more about changeups in part three. So let's reset. Now you may have noticed when I was clicking the button, a line would appear briefly between the mound and the plate. So if I press the mouse button down, but don't release it, as you see, a guide appears. This allows us to locate the pitch by sliding this button back and forth. So what do you think would happen if I slide it all the way to the right and release? Curveball outside. All right, now what about if I slide it right over the middle of the plate and double click? Swung on and missed, pretty good. So that was a fastball. So I think you get the idea of how to locate the pitch. You can also use the keyboard instead of the mouse. Here's how. Use the enter or space bar to reset the pitch. And then use the up arrow the same way we use the mouse button. So if I single click, it's a curveball. Enter to reset. And if I double click, it's a fastball. And reset. So if I hold the arrow button down and then use the left arrow button and the right arrow button, then I can locate the pitch. Fastball. And there's a strike. Let's try it again. Enter. Press the up arrow down. Left arrow all the way inside. Left arrow. Let's try outside corner. Curve ball. Release. Ball four. So that's how you use the keyboard to pitch. So let's move to the bottom of the first inning and I'll show you how to bat. First with the mouse. So we want to locate the white button lower right. This time we'll use it to bat. We press down to start the pitch and we release to swing. So we press down and release. Reset. Now a better way to do it because it gives you more control is to slide the button to the right to swing. So, press down to start the pitch, slide the button to the right. If it's a left-handed batter, the button will slide to the right, and if it's a right-handed batter, the button will slide to the left. Here's an example. Press to start the pitch, and swing. There you go. When the ball gets back to the pitcher, it's ready to be reset. Now I'll show you how to use the keyboard. Like the pitching interface, we are going to use the arrow keys. To start the pitch, 
we press the right arrow key down and release it to swing, like this. Now it doesn't matter which side of the plate you're batting from, it'll always be the right arrow key that you'll use to swing. The left arrow key is used before the pitch to choke up, so let's we'll reset and hit the left key arrow key just a couple of times, right arrow key to start the pitch, and release to swing. This will be explained in greater detail in part three of this tutorial. Now that you know the basics, let's move on to navigation. You can always find Iconic Baseball by going to IconicBaseball.com. You play it as an app in Facebook, and that address is apps.facebook.com slash IconicBaseball. When you first enter the app, the main screen appears. You can change the language down at the bottom, and there are two buttons, a small button that will take you to Home Run Icon, and a big button that will take you to Iconic Baseball. So let's click on that. The next menu gives us two choices. First, the league. Now, I highly recommend if you're just starting out to select the slow pitch league and work your way up to the fast pitch league. The fast pitch league is hard, and I made it hard on purpose so it would be a challenge. So start out with the slow pitch league and work your way up. Next, we pick a venue. We have Iconic Stadium, Iconic Park, and so forth. You can click on these thumbnails and get a little more details. If these stadiums look familiar, I don't know. Must be coincidence. So let's hit the OK button. Next screen, we pick an opponent. Now, if any of your friends are playing Iconic Baseball, and they should be, you can click on them, and their team will become your opponent. I'm just going to pick the default guest opponent. And here we are at the main screen, ready to play. So let's take a little tour around the main screen. Lower right here, we have the user interface box, which we're already kind of familiar with. There is an auto button here. If you press this, the game will play automatically for those people who just like to watch. And this is a diamond shape with a little dot. Now, this represents where the runners are on the, the base paths. If they should be out of view for some reason, you can find them here. This box is the pitcher info box, and this box is the batter info box. Much more on these two boxes uh, in part three. This, of course, is the scoreboard. And then at the very top, you see some menu buttons. If you click on the main menu, you'll be prompted to whether or not you want to stop this game and go back to the main menu, and you can exit that if you want and get back to this game here. The next button is the control button. There are two things you have control over. One is runner aggressiveness, and the default is right about here. So the higher it is, the more aggressive they are. So they might be thrown out at second base, trying to stretch a single into a double here. And here, they'll be really conservative. So it's, the default is usually pretty good. The second thing you can do is when you're on defense, you can actually position the uh, fielders. So first you choose whether you want this positioning to be for just this batter or for the whole game. And then you can pick from these already uh, templated ones like double play depth, infield in, righty shift, lefty shift, or custom. So you could actually move these guys anywhere you want. Now, huh, if you do something like that, that's going to be kind of unpredictable. So we don't necessarily recommend that. But, you know, if you want to try it, go ahead. So here's the standard. We can go back. Let's go to the next button. The next button is the stats. This is where you would see all the statistics that you've accumulated, uh, the batter statistics, the pitcher statistics, and if any of your friends are playing Iconic Baseball, their stats would be in this section also. And then the Customize button allows you to make uh, do your own colors and so forth. So you can change the color of your team the color of the, of the number and the making all kinds of wacky stuff here. You can type in a new name for your team. You only have five characters, so we'll type in sport. And lastly, this follow ball zoom out. I'll explain that in just a second, but let's save this and see what it looks like on the field. Oh, that's an awful color. Okay, let's go back and change that, and then I'll explain the uh, zoom out and follow ball. So. Let's see here. We'll put these something like this. Yeah, that's better. 
All right, so let's click on the Customize button again and uh, select Follow Ball. And let's see what happens. So when the ball makes contact, the camera actually follows the ball all the way out to the outfield with the same depth. Now you can see the value of the base runner indicator lower right in the user interface box. So you can tell where the runners are. So let's go back to customize and change that camera mode to zoom out and see what happens. Now when the ball makes contact, you just get a wider view of the field. It's just a personal preference. I go back and forth. Either way. So these other buttons in the menu are the Help button and the About button, and lastly, the Volume slider for sound effects. So now that we have covered the uh, navigation, let's get ready for Part 3 in depth. The next few minutes of this tutorial are going to show you the most important feature of Iconic Baseball. It's a little technical, but can be summed up like this. If you're pitching, avoid the center of the plate. If you're batting, look to swing at pitches as close to the center of the plate as possible. The center of the plate has a unique distinction in Iconic Baseball. So, to take full advantage of Iconic Baseball, it's good to understand what I like to call Iconic Baseball's great idea. It has to do with what happens at the moment when the bat contacts the ball. Two things are determined, the speed and the direction just like in real life. So imagine that you're in a batting cage and you're taking batting practice. So what is it that you're trying to do? Uh, you're trying to hit the ball hard, of course, to give it velocity, but you're also trying to hit the ball squarely so that the result is a line drive. If you can maximize both of these, then the ball will travel the maximum distance. So let's see how all that relates to Iconic Baseball and how it determines speed and direction. The speed, or velocity, is generated primarily by bat speed, how fast the bat is moving through the zone. All right, so far nothing too unusual. Now let's take a look at direction. So we'll split direction into two parts. We'll split it into a left and right plane and an up and down plane. A line drive will be moving a lot in the left and right plane, but not that much in the up and down plane. Conversely, if you pop it straight up, it'll be moving in the up and down plane and not at all really in the left and right plane. Now Iconic Baseball has a top-down view so we can think of left and right as two-dimensional and we can think of left and right plus up and down as three-dimensional. Now at the point of contact the left and right direction is determined by the angle of the bat as seen here. So how is the up and down direction determined? After all, we're in 2D, right? Well, let's zoom in. I'm going to draw an imaginary line between the mound right down the middle of home plate. And I'm going to place a ruler perpendicular to the batter to measure the distance between contact and the red line. So if contact is made here, the distance is zero. That will result in a line drive. If contact is made way out here, then it's going to result in the ball grazing off the bat, probably going foul. If contact is made here, it'll be popped up or hit into the ground. So at the point of contact, we take this value and we turn it into the up and down direction. Basically, we convert the game from 2D to 3D. So you're able to interact with the pitch in two dimensions, which gives you much more control, and then view the results in 3D. And that's why I call it Iconic Baseball's Great Idea. So now let's take a look at pitching in depth. We'll start with location, location, location. So when you press the mouse key or up arrow on the keyboard but you don't release it, this arrow appears and allows you to target the pitch. Uh, the ball won't automatically hit this exact target because there's an accuracy range. The pitch will cross the plate within this range. Its exact location is determined randomly by the game. So when you first press the button or key, the outside corner is targeted as a default. And if you don't change it and the batter doesn't swing, it'll be called a strike about 50% of the time. If we slide the target arrow further outside, like this, it'll be a ball. 
If we target the center of the plate like this, it'll be a strike. Now the size of this range is determined by the pitcher's accuracy tool. You'll find that value in the pitcher info box. It's abbreviated ACCURE and is followed by a series of red chiclets. You'll find that any time a pitcher or batter has a tool, its value is always represented by red chiclets between 1 and 5. 1 is always the weakest value and 5 is always the strongest. So in this case, 5 red chiclets is the strongest value a pitcher can have and it results in the smallest accuracy range. If we change the accuracy tool to 4 red chiclets, you'll notice that the range has gotten bigger and we can follow it all the way down to 1 and see a very large accuracy range. Even targeting the center of the plate does not guarantee a strike. And when we target the outside corner, the dreaded center of the plate falls within this range. But two other factors affect the accuracy range. One is pitch selection. A fastball or a changeup will have no effect, but a curveball will increase the range, so keep that in mind. And secondly, pitcher fatigue causes the range to swell. Let's take another look at the pitcher info box and I'll show you. So there's a pitcher tool called stamina and its value corresponds to the pitch count. And you can check the pitcher's fatigue level by looking at the tank. As the pitch count goes up, the tank runs out. So a stamina level of one will start to fatigue at about 10 pitches. Two will be 15 pitches, three at 30, four at 75, and five at 90 pitches. Now as the fatigue increases, both the accuracy and velocity will degrade. So when it comes time to make a pitching change, just click on the bullpen button and select a new pitcher. Now that we have a handle on accuracy, let's take a look at velocity. Now if you double click really fast, you might get it up to 99 miles an hour. That is the iconic baseball speed limit. The faster the pitch, the more likely it is to result in a swing and miss, and that's a good Strike thing. Out. But if contact is made, then that extra velocity is transferred to the batted ball, and that is not such a good thing. Home run. Now a changeup might be the most effective pitch because it benefits from the same accuracy as the fastball, but it's not hit as hard. Here, I'll show you how to throw one. It's essentially a slow double click. I'll pause the game to demonstrate. After the release of the pitch, look for the apex of the windup right there. That's where you want the second click. If you do that, you'll always get a changeup. Now it's nice to get strikeouts, but it also makes sense sometimes to pitch to contact. Now in this situation, I have two runners on, nobody out, a slow runner at first. So I'm going to throw a first pitch curveball right down the middle and hope to induce a ground ball. Well, that was hit pretty hard. I think I got lucky. Oh. Now that we've looked in depth at pitching, let's look at batting. If pitching is about location, then batting is about timing. Because the bat and the ball are on the same 2D plane, all you have to do to hit the ball is time it right. But choking up on the bat is one way to shorten the reaction time. But keep in mind, it will decrease the velocity when the ball is hit. You can check your swing without it being considered a swinging strike as long as the bat doesn't cross the plate. Once that happens, then it's automatically called a strike. This is good to keep in mind, especially when bunting. You can pull the bat back to take a pitch as long as the bat hasn't crossed the plate. Now let's take a look at the batter info box. Speed is the first of three tools and like the pitcher tools, its value is represented by red chiclets ranging from one to five. One being the weakest and five being the strongest. Or in this case, one being the slowest and five being the fastest. The speed tool represents how fast the player runs. And keep in mind when a player reaches base, its speed value transfers to base running. This also applies to defense. So a first baseman with a speed value of two will have a smaller fielding range 
than a second baseman with a speed value of 4. The power tool value represents the force behind the swing. It can be thought of as a measure of bat weight, so the more red chiclets, the heavier the bat. A batter with a power value of 1 might get lucky and hit a home run once in a season. Here's an example of the home run output with a power value of 3. And a batter with the power value of 5 is apparently Roger Maris. The I tool value represents how much of the plate is commanded by the batter. The higher the number, the more line drives. And this has a direct influence on batting average. For instance, here's an example of an I value of 2, and it results in a batting average of 241. An I value of 4 is 307, and an I value of 5 is very impressive indeed. Now, when you're batting, it's always good to work the count. You'll get a better pitch to hit if the count is in your favor. Also, increasing the opposition's pitch count always pays dividends, especially if the game goes to extra innings. Well, that concludes this iconic baseball tutorial. The links to the game will be listed below, and as always, let's play iconic baseball! Home run!